So how is everything going, Grace? <sighs> I spent another fun, bit fun, <laughs> fun pack day. Have you done all seven shows yet, or no, is there one no, more? No, no, I think we've got one more to go. It's pretty full on. I just admire the energy of the models and the dancers so much. So yeah, you're over in the Suzuki Fashion Theatre, aren't you? Yeah. So what's going on over there? I haven't had a chance to see the show you yet, but I'm to, coming on Monday. You have to, you have to, have to. Um, I, I think it's a really great experience for anybody who likes fashion. It's really inclusive. And um, I think it would be, you know, there's lots of kind of performance, there's a lot of dance, there's fashion. There's a bit in it that reminds me of a Fellini film for a really artistic reference there. <laughs> it's like everyone's dressed kind of a bit crazy in black and white. It's a really interesting moment. Um, and what I like about it, it's it's not just kind of po-faced models walking up yeah. and down for 40 minutes, yeah. which to be honest, anybody would suffer to yeah. kind of like really be enthusiastic yeah. all the way through. I think I've actually got a few of the models staying, a few of the male models staying in our hotel. I noticed at breakfast there were some very good looking people talking about you shouldn't be eating that much bacon. I thought you must be dancing to be having that sort of conversation. <laughs> but um, yeah, so what uh, else are you doing kind of here? Is that your main kind of thing? You haven't had time, I guess, to go shopping or anything, have you? No, I haven't yet. But I am going to head down to the Elemis. Yes. Spa bus, which is so are cool. Are they doing little treatments in there? Yeah, they're stuff? doing like mini treatments. So I'm all about that. I mean, this whole thing, it's a weekend. You know, it's about, you know, it's about a treat. Yeah. It's like treating yeah. ourselves. Um, and what else do I want to do? I want to go to the... Um, the uh, British industry part, so yeah. it's where uh, British only ma made in Britain yeah. labels are. Um, they're all do are, you know selling their wares there, and it's something that's really. Uh, I was going to say close to my heart, but that sounds a bit like oh, it's close to my heart. It's something I'm really interested yeah. in, in in the challenge of can we bring manufacturing back to the yeah. UK in some form or other. It doesn't have to be the whole thing, but yeah. I think. I think that we should, and we should try. And so everybody getting behind that thing, that this is once, once upon a time, made in Britain really made some, made, made, yeah. you know, meant something. Yeah. And now it, it has a very different connotation. But I still think that we have incredible industries here um, and I'm really behind that. And we need to pass on the skills to kind of the next generation. Right. I mean, I've been to some of the factories where they're making like beautiful leather bags and everyone's like 75. And they're well, like, Mulberry. if no one's coming in underneath them. Mulberry, then. who's... Um, uh, their, their factory or their workshop, their main workshop is in Somerset and they have an apprenticeship scheme. So, you know, everyone does workplace and stuff. This is proper apprenticeship, yeah, like the old-fashioned yeah. kind of style of leather makers. So they go in because they were finding that their craftsmen were all about to retire yeah. and they were like, how are we going how are we going to deal with this so they started this apprenticeship scheme which i think is really great yeah no it is fantastic and then so slightly aside from clothes show live obviously you were once upon a time stylist on the x factor have you had a chance to watch it all this season or haven't i know they're wearing a lot the boys are all in coats and i feel very sorry for them under the lights they're all in kind of like winter wonderland coats and scarves and boots for every uh, every performance it's crazy land that place yeah um <laughs> Um, I was ill one weekend and so I stayed in on a Saturday night and I got that kind of like that oh my god this is so much fun you know being you know I'm, I'm not often in on a Saturday yeah. night so it was it it was a lot of fun and I was like really naughty and I was like tweeting a lot I was like it's ah. <laughs> like this because I'm kind of distance enough from it now yeah um, you know, just to enjoy it, yeah. to really enjoy it. Look at the spectacle as entertainment and nothing else. Yeah. And so, just thinking of the other kind of celebrities and hosts here, I've seen Amy Childs walking about today. But you're working with Henry Holland, aren't you? And is this Henry Holland this dress? This is a Henry Holland dress, indeed. That's my earrings rattling around. Um, yes, it's absolutely just everyone's got that amazing. dress. It's great. However. The the clothes show put out a tweet going, uh, "This is great." You know, Henry and. Uh, and, and, and Grace in one of his dresses. And somebody replied to my address going, yeah, um, Nicola looked better in it. Oh. And I was like, okay, you no. know, if people I think with Twitter forget you that are you're a, a human, human yes. at the end of it, especially if they send a message to you. Yeah. So I replied and I said, thanks, that really helps my confidence today. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I didn't mean to upset you. And it's like, well, hello, you tweeted me. Yeah. No. It is quite insane the whole do you find people asking you for a lot of style advice on Twitter not realizing yeah. that you can't necessarily answer every single style I, yeah I, 
and then I it's your fault, of answer, course. I try to answer the sort of more personal things. Yeah. For example, um, I get a lot of young girls seeming coming to me to ask about body image, and yeah. I've been doing a lot of work recently. I went on BBC Three's um, uh, Free Speech, uh, and it, they've been doing a whole season about body image, and obviously because. I've been working with women's bodies and women's yeah. images for a long time. And their self-esteem, I guess, in, That's in the right. process. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you can, you can take that both ways. It can, be, you know, it can be really misconstrued or you can work in a really positive way. At the, you know, I only work with um, Boots as a commercial campaign because they don't retouch and they use real women. Yeah. And, you know, I got to a point after doing TV and the whole Twitter thing opening up that I was just like, oh... I'm not in this fashion bubble anymore where certain things have merit, using the, the newest, hottest girl around yeah. and stuff like that. And, um, and, I, and I sort of thought to myself, actually, me as a woman, I don't want to do any more work that would make women more unhappy or confused than, than necessary. Yeah. Things are hard enough now, you know, with trying to deal with everything. And I just didn't want to. I didn't want to retouch beauty images and things like that. And so now I'm putting my money where my mouth is yeah, by doing yeah. boots. And and I think it's a really nice. Uh, I think it's a really nice campaign that should be celebrated, and more people should do that. Yeah. We talked a lot about retouching on free speech and the fact that beauty uh, beauty adverts and wrinkle creams they they're retouching the adverts. And we're saying should we should they should all um, digitally. You know, um, all images that have been digitally remastered or be, did, you know retouched, yeah. anything happened to them? Should they be kite marked? Should they have yeah, a carrier uh, disclaimer? Uh, yeah, yeah, a disclaimer. This isn't real. Don't worry. You don't have to be this. Yeah, um, and uh, and I agree to some extent, but there's also the fact that retouching in the the world of fashion fantasy, yeah, within fashion editorial, is an art. It can create. Yeah. An atmosphere that it can create a fantasy that you couldn't necessarily get from shooting in a studio or shooting at a location. Yeah, and sometimes you're simply retouching because the lighting wasn't correct, rather than because she's too or fat or to, wrinkly. Or, yeah, yeah, or to just create the fantasy of swirling imagery. You know, yeah. and but so um, that's why I think it's an it's an art, and that's in its purest form. But unfortunately, you know, that can be that can be also used to make people's waists tiny. Mm. Um, and and things kind of slightly taken out of context. Um, I don't think. I mean, I think that if if it's if it's done well, the the problem is is being really heavy-handed about stuff. Yeah. I was saying I think that it, it turned. It's a bit nannying. This has been this has been manipulated. Rather than teaching people, maybe at a school level. If they I mean, I was horrified recently that Michael Gove was talking about taking art off the national curriculum. I was just horrified, horrified. And I sort of think, if, 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 if the media is something that's affecting people's lives that much, then a, you know, a, a blanket education on it yeah. should be something like that, that the images are manipulated. It should be an understanding that when you look at image, it don't take it at face value. Yeah. Rather than being like, this has been retouched kind of stamp. But, you know, and it's a bit like, I do, you can't treat everybody like they're stupid. It's, yeah, you know. yeah. I mean, BBC Three do an amazing job, actually. Yeah. I mean, I remember a few documentaries about really young girls with eating disorders that were desperate to get the thigh gap, or, you know, the perfect gap in between the legs where the knickers are. And they took one girl into a shoot where a tiny, tiny model was being shot for like an underwear kind of shoot and they were still retouching her thighs and they were saying you know this idea of this big thigh gap you ever will see doesn't really exist and the girl just like burst into tears because she was like oh like this release of I'm actually striving for something that even the models don't have and it's a difficult argument it's a really interesting space and a difficult yeah. argument because you, it's a really knee-jerk reaction to blame the media yeah, on everything yeah. but obviously there are people who do crazy things because it's apparently the aesthetic but you know some magazines don't have that kind of perspective some do it's a kind of responsibility especially with young girls for their also their parents yeah, to be parents like what are you reading yeah is this you know is this stuff going to mess with your mind and do you think the rise of online and blogging and that sort of thing kind of helps with diversity of like you know people are saying actually that's a really successful girl who's size whatever and people are being able to kind of experiment with fashion and get I ideas from places other than magazines well i definitely think the thing is the truth will out on something like twitter because you can't construct 
you can't construct something. For example, if a, if, if a celebrity, because the celebrities are actually, I think, more powerful than models, because most people yeah, wouldn't know what, who or yeah. what models' names are, yeah. but everyone knows Victoria Beckham, for example. Yeah. So, you know, the good thing about Twitter is you can get a more, a more truthful access to yeah. people, um, but also just to be mindful about, you know, having a moral compass in stuff. And lastly, I just want to ask you about trends very quickly. Are there any trends that you're particularly excited about for Christmas autumn jumpers? Wins at Christmas? There's a lot of Christmas jumpers here. I'm you desperate get to get a Christmas jumper. There's proper vintage Christmas jumpers and some really brilliantly ugly ones. So yeah, do go and have a look. Um, I'm going to get out there and get one because I've got. I'm going to a children in need thing that Lauren Laverne's doing. So I'm definitely going to ah, do that. Oh wow! And then what for, for spring summer? Uh, there's a real. I mean, I feel like I'm just trotting out stuff that I've been saying for 10 years because it is slightly samey every yeah. season, so, I oh, have to admit. Oh, spring florals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, white. Yeah. Um, or maybe a bit of, maybe a bit of, you know, um, nautical. <laughs> maybe some... Maybe a Breton stripe and a flash of colour. Uh -huh. yeah. Or maybe Africa. <laughs> <laughs> you could, I mean, at least I could laugh, I could yeah. laugh at it. Yeah. We can, you know, it's having a sense of humour with fashion that really helps. But... Um, there's a lot of, um, I'd say, crisp m modernity yeah. for spring, summer. Um, like, not kitsch, not kitsch um, neons, but like sort of really modern and clean lines with like a sort of acidy, sort of yellowy yeah. green. That's like, like, your, like your earrings, That's really. Yeah. H&M, <laughs> not Tom Bins. Um, and would you say generally sometimes it's better for people just to dress for themselves rather than feeling like they need to conform to absolutely, this magazine? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I think that it's difficult because we're bombarded with yeah. fashion information now, which is kind of great in one way, but also it's like a tidal wave. Yeah, it's overwhelming sometimes. It, you know, even yeah. for me, it's overwhelming. And so people want to consume in, in, in a way, in bite-size information, which so trends can be interesting from that point of view and useful, but also I kind of feel like they can all be a bit dictatorial. You should wear this and you should wear that and everybody should be wearing this. And it's like, I don't really believe in that. When I, as a stylist, what I would do is take somebody and try to work out the essence of who they are mm. and then blow them up and then bl not blow them up, literally. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, make bigger the, e the essence of who they are. So, you know, making, making them more of a brand, making their, yeah. their kind of uniqueness even, even more so. Well, thank you very much for coming to see us in the Echo Falls Wine Bar today. I'll let you get back to your uh, models and dancers. Thank you very much. Thank Grace. you.